Bowling finishes runner-up in Nashville. And the YC softball team completes a three-game sweep. All this and more coming up right here on the Penguin Rundown. Hello everyone and welcome back to another rendition of the Penguin Rundown. I am your host Bryce Noel alongside me Donald Van Horn and Donald a lot of sports finishing up a lot of new sports uh, coming into the swing of things now. Um, it's just been a wild time. We just had postseason play in the Horizon League tournament with both the men and women basketball team and the softball and baseball teams are starting up just now. Yes, absolutely, Donald. Speaking of baseball, the YSU baseball team began conference play at home in a three-game series against the Purdue Fort Wayne Macedons. The series started last Friday night where the Penguins picked up their first win of the season. Junior Jacob Gehring pitched eight innings, allowing only two runs to hold down Purdue's offense. Junior Teddy Ruffner picked up two hits and three RBIs. Saturday would be a different story for the Penguins. Despite an early three-run lead, the Mastodons would explode for eight runs in the top of the fifth inning, pushing them to a 13-3 win over YSU. In the rubber match, freshman Alejandro Kovas showed off his speed, hitting two triples throughout the contest. However, the pitching cannot support the offense as YSU would lose the game 18-5. The Gwens will play a non-conference game later today at home against Bowling Green State University. The, the game can be listened to on YSNLive.com. After a long slate of tournaments and out-of-conference games, the YC softball team started Horizon League games last weekend in a series against Detroit Mercy. In Game 1 of Saturday's doubleheader, the Penguins offense exploded for six runs in the first inning, then five runs in the second. Senior Sophie Howell pitched well, holding the Titans to zero hits for four and one-third innings. The Penguins took Game 1 by a score of 11-1, then took the nightcap, once again in dominating fashion, winning 10-1. In the series finale on Sunday, fifth-year catcher Cochetta Rinaldi broke out with a three-hit game, including a double and two RBI. The Penguins completed the sweep over the Titans, winning 10-1. YSU was set to host an out-of-conference doubleheader against Bowling Green, but due to inclement weather, the game has been postponed to a later date. The Penguins' next matchup will be a three-game series against Purdue-Fort Wayne in Fort Wayne, Indiana on March 22nd and 23rd. For live updates on the game, visit YSUSports.com. The YSU men's basketball team was the number two seed going into the Horizon League Championship Tournament, earning a bye and hosting a quarterfinal game. Coming into the Beagley Center on March 7th would be the Cleveland State Vikings. The Penguins were struggling to find the bottom of the basket early in the game and ended the ha first half down by six with the Vikings leading 44-38. The Penguins were able to pull themselves within four during the last five minutes of, five minutes of regulation. However, fouls proved to be the Achilles heel of the team as Cleveland State was able to convert at the line and won the game by a final of 82-70. We like to congratulate the men's basketball team on a great season. And for a recap on how the Penguin season went, we'd like to send it over to our very own Caleb Ellison, who is at the roundtable. Thanks, guys. Caleb Ellison here at a one-person roundtable for today. We're going to be talking about the men's basketball season, kind of how it got into it, and what was the end result of it. Now, going into the season, there were a lot of question marks regarding the team. It was pretty much a whole new roster, seven transfer players, and a handful of freshmen. What was this team going to look like? And early on in the season, this team showed exactly who they're going to be. They went on a seven-game winning streak from mid-November to late December, and in the first 10 conference games of the season, YSU went 7-3 three, showing why they belong in the conference and they're not a team you can mess with. Now, a part of this team's success were some reliable players, key players, that when their number was called all season long, they answered. The first one we're going to be talking about here is Ziggy Reed, who is a transfer student from Merrimack. He led the Penguins this season in points per game with 14.5, and he was also selected to the All Horizon League second team. Now, another member of that second team that I'm going to bring up here is DJ Burns, who is another transfer student. He led the Penguins in rebounds per game with 11, and he averaged a double double per game. He was also named to the All Horizon League defensive team, so when you're able to put up stats like that, reliable production all season long, there's a reason why he was a fan favorite. And now the third player we're going to be talking about here was a true freshman, another member of the All Defensive Team for the Horizon League, and that is Gabe Dines. He led the team with 61 blocks in the season, which was almost 40 more than the second place Penguin. Now the 
part about this team, everyone knew their role and they played to their role to exceptional abilities. You had people like Brett Thompson, who was a playmaker. They knew where to make plays, who to pass it to. And then we had people in the paint, DJ Pern, Ziggy Reed, Gabe Dines. Once they found their spot and they got that open look in the basket, they made sure to find the bottom of it. And so looking forward here, now the Penguins have to look forward with the premature end to their season. How can they continue to ride the regular uh, season success they've had for the past few years? And how can they create a new postseason legacy? We heard it from Jared Calhoun after the game against Cleveland State that it is, quote, portal season. So this offseason will be one to look forward to here as we go into the 2024-25 season. Bryce and Donald, back to you. On March 5th, the YSU women's basketball team hosted an opening round matchup of the Horizon League playoff tournament against the IUPUI Jaguars. YSU's defense shined early on, limiting IUPUI to only 9 points in the first quarter, leading the offense for the Penguins with 18 points, with 15 of them coming in just the second half as a team of the Penguins shot very well, going from 50% from beyond the three-point line. With a 73-50 victory over the Jaguars, YSU looked to ride the momentum into Green Bay in a game against the Phoenix. The Green Bay offense scored early and often, posting 27 points in the opening quarter. Senior Shaylee Kirby led the team with 15 points, and Magestro was able to connect with four three-point baskets in the contest. The Penguins' playoff run ended in the quarterfinals with a 94-57 loss. The Penguins fought hard all season, and for a preview of what to look for next season, Caleb Ellison is back at the round table. Hey, welcome back. Good to see you again. We're going to be talking about the women's basketball team this time, and similar to the men's team, there were a lot of question marks going in. It was announced just about a month before the season started that head coach John Barnes would be taking a leave of absence, putting John Nicolais as the interim head coach. And the preseason coaches poll had the Penguins picked third place in the conference, so there's high expectations for this team going in. And we saw the returning roster of guards, players like Malia Magestro, Matty Allball, Dina Geralds, we knew what to expect out of them, and they were able to play up to their standards. However, the forward role was a bit of a mystery. With Lily Litt Ritz graduating out, the Penguins had to figure out how can they replicate that success in the paint. And with an early season-ending injury to Jen Wendler, Emily Saunders stepped up into that role and stepped up in a big way. She led the Penguins in points per game and rebounds per game and also blocks on the season by a considerable margin. She was voted to the All Horizon League third team and was also placed on the All League defensive team. And so when there's a lot of deciding factors for close games on the Penguins end, a lot of it came down to the effort that Saunders was willing to put in. Now looking into the postseason here, the YSU, as you just heard, was able to win their first round matchup against IUPUI however, did meet the eventual tournament winner Green Bay in the quarterfinals. So it's not the ending the Penguins were looking for, however, the future is looking bright. Younger players such as Haley Theory, Abby Liber, Abby Davidson got some playing time down the stretch of the season, and so they'll be looking to step up going in the next year. And it was just announced last week that the univer former University of Akron head coach, Melissa Jackson, will be coming to be the head coach of YSU's program. Jackson did spend last season as an assistant coach for Cleveland State, so she knows what to expect for the Horizon League schedule and should provide exciting Penguins basketball for the 2024-25 season. Now there are a lot of good things to look forward to with this Penguins program. Lots of young players looking to step up and prove why they belong. It'll be a fun one to look forward to, and we're going to go back to Bryson Donald. Thanks, Caleb. The YSU women's bowling team had an impressive performance over the weekend, competing at the 2024 Music City Classic hosted by Vanderbilt University. After going 4-1 in the first two days of the meet, the Penguins were the second seed going into the best of seven Baker matches. The Penguins opened with the win over Jacksonville State to lock in a spot in the championship match. However, the Penguins would end up meeting the Gamecocks again to decide the tournament winner. The series would conclude in Game 6 with Jacksonville State picking up the win 177-152. to Seniors Madison Marks and Kirsten Moore were named to the All-Tournament team. The Penguins are competing this weekend in the inaugural Conference USA Championships. The games will be broadcasted live on ESPN+. The YSU women's lacrosse team, a team finished their three-game homestand with games against George Washington University and Kent State.
First against Washington, the Penguins were able to score first and kept the game close, only down by one going in halftime. However, three goals in the last four minutes from the Revolutionaries sealed the win with YSU losing 14-11. to Last Sunday, the Penguins began the Mid-American Conference play at home against Kent State going flashes. Kent State got ahead early, leading 7-2 by the end of the first quarter, but strong performances from the freshmen got YSU back into the game including five goals coming from Lena Cox alone. Despite the momentum, two Kent State goals in the final 60 seconds of the, was the deciding factor as the Penguins dropped the conference opener 16-15. The women's lacrosse team will be on the road for the next three games, including a conference game against Detroit Mercy. For updates on the team, for updates on the team visit YZSports.com. The men's tennis team hosted Duquesne last Friday. Against the Dukes, YSU dropped the doubles point and had to fight from behind. Despite the deficit, YSU would go on to win five out of six singles matches to, to secure a 5-2 victory. Junior Harry Fowles had an impressive win, winning his first set 6-love, then his second set 6-1. Asir Ibanez also played well, winning both sets 6-1. YSU will host league rival Cleveland State this Friday at 6 p.m., followed by another home match against Chicago State at 3 p.m. For, for live scoring from the matches, visit YSUsports.com. The YSU women's tennis team had a busy weekend, hosting two matches. First against Duquesne on Friday afternoon, the Penguins came out swinging. YSU secured the doubles point to open the day and won all but one singles match with to secure a 6-1 win over the Dukes. Junior Julian Marco and freshman Yesenia Ocharova both won their matches in three sets. The next morning, the Penguins welcomed Big Ten school Michigan State to the YSU Indoor Tennis Center. After YSU dropped the doubles point, the Spartans would quickly quench the match, beating YSU 4-1. The lone Penguins point came from junior Lily Minich, who won her match 6-2 and 6-2. The Penguins will be on the road this Saturday to play against Cleveland State Vikings. First service set for 1 p.m. And that'll just wrap it up here at the Penguin Rundown. For live news, stats, scores, and more, you can head over to YSUsports.com. And for everything Penguin Rundown related, you can follow us on both of our social medias on X and Instagram at Penguin Rundown 1. I've been Bryce Noel. I've been Donald Van Horn. And as usual, stay safe, Penguin Nation.